the Internet of Things, episode one. This is a personal recording made for my own personal use and purposes, but which is to be published along with all the following episodes, in case anybody finds it of interest and of use. This is musing about the Internet, how humans use it, how it affects humans, how it used to be, how it is, and how it might be in the future, and everything to do with it, which is why I'm calling it the Internet of Things, which is now a coined phrase, I believe. It's probably even in the English dictionary as a phrase. <laughs> but anyway, I think a lot about the Internet and the way I understand it as a webmaster and person who has been involved with IT and the internet since about 1998. I feel like a grandpa of the internet age. I've seen a lot of changes come and I've seen some things never change. So I decided to start making some musings about the internet. The thing I'm going to talk about a lot is online commerce, which is really in fashion around the world now almost everybody's got an online shop or sells something online in thailand it's now becoming big but uh, the way it's promoted and the way people are being conditioned to get into this in my opinion is wrong well it's not wrong but it's uh it's deceptive most, I personally do e-commerce online with my own domains, my own .com or .net domains and my own software installed and my own identity, my own website. But most people who are doing online commerce, they don't code or they don't, they're not a webmaster, they cannot make a design theme or install a database or... Uh, work a blog, they don't know how to work the interface of a blog and so uh, they seem to because of this people have been kept from knowing how to do this very easily at the push of a button, which it is very easy it's a push of a button stuff these days you don't need to code the tools are there for you, but people don't seem to know this and so what are they doing? they go to etsy.com they go to ebay.com they go to Amazon.com and they go to Facebook.com and other places. Or they go to Weebly.com or they get a Wix website or a Shopify website and they're told they can buy a .com with Shopify but they're stuck with Shopify and most people will just put it on the Shopify domain and they will make themselves a Facebook page, a Facebook profile with the shop in Thailand, it's, people don't make a Facebook page. They use their own personal profile and try and sell face cream and stuff using their own profiles. Does it going to bring some revenue? Yeah, you'll make a bit of extra pocket money, but you still have to go to work every day like that. You want to sell on Etsy? A few people have really made it successful, but you know, if you look at anybody who doesn't go to work anymore and just runs their online shop, you find that most of them use their own .com domain or .net or whatever your .domain is, what you choose, .biz, .net, .co, .com. That's also something that people don't really know how to use. But uh, I see that this e-commerce thing, you have Shopify, Big Commerce, WooCommerce, uh, Wix, Weebly, and all of these uh, services that offer you to kind of sell things online but through them, through their website like eBay or Etsy and the truth is there you're just another face in the crowd if you do that you can sell but uh, to get yeah on eBay you have people who are power sellers full time pros Amazon too but it's very hard because you're competing with a lot of people. people. The customers can compare the price with other sellers in the same website, other Amazon sellers, other eBay sellers. You've got a lot more easy competition, easy access for the customer. If you've just got them on your website, 
they look at your products, they can't compare them with other eBay customers because eBay doesn't have your products. And so I've always preferred to go it alone. And it's working lucratively enough for me as it is. Um, I know a lot of people who are using Etsy and eBay and I still see they're going to work. They still have a daytime job. Or some of them just don't have enough money. But, you know, uh, just for pocket money. Why do it for pocket money when it can become your whole life and you don't have to go to work anymore? And the truth is, there's really much easier ways to do it and to have more success. And the truth is that a lot more people in the world don't really have to go to work but they they don't realize and so that's one thing of the internet of things of people are being tricked into thinking you have to do it on a facebook page or on an etsy website or a crafts website or something you don't it's good for etsy is for arts and crafts so if you sell arts and crafts you can have a sub shop there i do have my whole shop inserted into etsy which I can just insert like a YouTube video and all of my products appear and people can, it's actually my store on my domain but I can embed it into my Etsy store and I've got a Weebly store, I've got all of those but not as my main thing those are like just little clones of my website just for an internet presence so Etsy and Facebook and all, all Twitter and you should have those pages for your website but those pages should be the official Twitter page of your website not your official website. The Etsy page should be the official Etsy presence of your website. Not your website, your main website. And it gives you an identity. It gives you a much more of a, a, a respectable look and feel to your business rather than just squatting on Etsy, on Etsy or squatting on eBay because you don't have your own domain. The first thing I think when a seller does that is why doesn't he have his own domain? This isn't very trustworthy. He's selling things from his bedroom. It's not a professional. He's not going to offer me professional support. And he might not be experienced in the product he's selling. There is no information on his website about him at all. My website is full of support information, information about the owner, information about our policies and stuff. Whereas on eBay, yeah, you can read about the policy of eBay, but you, you can't really see much about the authenticity and authority of the seller. Yeah, lots of people buy that stuff because they don't think like me too. They haven't thought of that, why it's less impressive than somebody's own website. But, you know, if I see some guy selling Apple products on Etsy or on eBay, or I can buy straight from Apple online from their website, I'm going to buy straight from Apple. That's for sure. You can get it engraved as well, even. Anyway, so that was my first musing on the internet of things. And uh, I think I'll try to do a musing every day, a couple of days or so. And uh, I will be talking a lot about e commerce, but I'll be talking about other stuff as well about user experience, about how trending changes things and how people blindly follow trendings and how trending is used, the, the use of trending is used to condition and force us into doing things that people want us to do. For example, if you have a website and you're trading online, you might have subscribed to a couple of marketing blogs who send you newsletters about what's the latest trends or what's the latest ways to market or get more customers or get your customers back and they'll send you all this stuff like for example a abandoned shopping cart uh, and then they say uh, you know if you use it has been shown that people who use special coupon codes for discounts when customers try to abandon the shopping cart on the website you can make a pop-up come up that says, are you sure you want to go? Would you like to make use of our special discount offer coupon code? And you will read the blog that this has shown that it really um, helps to not lose sales and make more sales. Of course, 
That's not true. First of all, I've tested that and it's not true because uh, the people who are abandoning the cart, most of them are my regular customers and repeat customers, and they do what I do. Stick stuff in the cart and then change your mind, decide to start again or get something different instead. And so you abandon the cart, but you still go back and buy something. Abandoning the cart is much far from leaving the website. doesn't mean leaving the website. just means abandoning the cart. So why are they writing this thing telling you that uh, abandoned carts uh, can be used with the scripts to stop the customer from leaving? It's because they've done a deal with a developer company who will offer you abandoned cart customer bring back script and you'll pay a monthly fee to insert that into your website and your shop and so the trending of creating a public belief that the abandoned cart widget coupon code widget or whatever they want to call it that is a special script that tries to stop people leaving their shopping cart and offer them a discount yeah that is to condition people into believing that is a necessary and effective thing you need for your business. And the next thing, you've got another $20 a month to pay. And will you really know if you have sold extra from abandoned cart script? Well, if your monthly sales are much higher after inserting it, noticeably higher, then you can possibly attribute some of the reasons to that. But I did it. And what I did notice that was that the people abandoning the carts were mostly my repeat customers. And that on the same day or the next day, they still bought something. And so, you know, if I used a script saying, hey, please don't abandon this cart, try 20% off. That person who's going to come and buy something anyway, he's just deciding which thing he wants to buy and abandoning the cart for now. He would buy it without the 20% discount. And so maybe I will get three sales from abandoned carts using that script and give them 20% discounts. But maybe if I hadn't even done that and just left them to abandon the cart, they might still come back and buy the, month, buy the stuff without a 20% discount. And that way I make more profit. I've done the numbers. I've done the test. What I can say is that whatever the monthly fee for the service of the abandoned cart script that these service providers offer you is never going to rentabilize it unless you're a very big operation. I've uh, got about 2,500 customers and about four or 5,000 products in my three stores which is a relatively big operation and that's still not big enough to make this abandoned cart uh, trick, as I like to call it, or gimmick worth it. It does not rentabilize itself. To put myself for life in a 20 or $18 or whatever dollar per month service to plug it into my online store software. Not going to do it. I've tried it and it doesn't work. So that's trending. Things are set off through blogs and writing about how to sell online and what are the best plugins and what's the best ways to increase your customers. They write blogs about this and the people who write blogs about this are in cahoots with the service providers who wish to make people trend into believing that these services are going to increase their business efficiency up to the point where it's going to be worth it. It isn't. It's going to make the, of the more stuff you plug into your online store and extra services, the more monthly fees you're making for yourself and the more difficult you're going to make it for yourself to make your website and online store rentabilitizable and affordable and profitable. Don't fall for it. If you go with big commerce, Shopify, all of these, as soon as you got with them, they are ramming all of these plugins down your throat all of the time trying to sell you plugins which believe me you don't need there's a, more than one ways to cook an egg and the best way to success online is to do everything yourself that you can 
And what you can't, find free software or find free ways to do it. There's always a free way to do it. Because once you start hiring other people to do it, it becomes more expensive than the money you can make. And it makes it very difficult to succeed. Whereas if you do it all yourself and you don't rely on those things, whatever you sell, that's yours. Be it a lot or a little, you're not going to have to cut out all of those extra costs first. So trending is not to be believed. Trending is a tool used by people who want to get their services widely used around the world. But they're not necessarily as useful as they're always made out to be. Don't believe the hype. So, that was it. The Internet of Things, part one. So much to talk about. There's social matters, commerce matters, safety matters, security matters, cultural matters, uh, information sharing, freedom of speech matters. There's a lot of things to talk about with the Internet. The tech matters, technology issues. And hope to make another one soon. That's with the Internet of Things, signing off.